Hi, my name is Anne van Berkel. I'm working for GS1 Switzerland. I'd like to present you some insights on UDI and MDR and how to implement UDI with the GS1 system. In this short tutorial, you will see the identify part of UDI. You will see what the basic UDI DI is and how you can create this important identification key. But before we jump into the tutorial, I would like to show you our disclaimer. Neither GS1 nor its member organizations or their staff have the authority to speak for the regulators or to grant exceptions. GS1 provides recommendations focused on GS1 standards. Neither GS1 nor its member organization and their employees assume no liability for the action taken by their members. To give you another support, we highlight on several slides some questions. These questions will help you on your journey to UDI. Let's move to the chapter identifying the UDI. We will start with identify or the identification key of the GS1 system to create the UDI. In order to create a uniform basis, we must first learn the basics of the GS1 system. Let's start with the GCP. The basis of all identification possibilities is the GCP, Global Company Prefix. Sometimes this is also called GS1 Company Prefix. You receive this number with a membership of GS1 and if you buy a number range. The GCP is between 7 and 11 digits long in Switzerland and it depends on which number range you have licensed. With this GCP on the slide 7, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you are able to create 100,000 GTINs. This number range is according to GS1 Switzerland and will be used for all examples in this presentation. If your own number range is used up, you can request a new additional one. We offer different number ranges from 10 till 100,000. We will see exactly how the GCP is put together afterwards into the GTIN and also into the basic UDI-DI. We will take a closer look at the most important identification possibilities, the basic UDI-DI. On the next few slides, I will talk about the basic UDI-DI. We saw the basic of identification and that we need a GS1 company prefix. Let's move on to the first ID key, basic UDI-DI. I would like to explain you the basic UDI-DI first, then I show you how this ID key is created. In the GS1 system, the basic UDI-DI is called GMN, Global Model Number. Never mind, we will use the term basic UDI-DI. The basic UDI-DI is required in the UDI as a unique classification key for medical devices in Eudamate. It's the first key you will enter in Eudamate. It is used for the unique identification of product models. Like you see in this, on this slide, the syringe may be produced in different colors. Also, it will be available on the market in different packaging levels. But all these products form the single, from the single piece to the multiple pack have one thing in common. There is only one basic UDI-DI, which gather these products in one group. From GS1, we suggest you, before you assign UDI-DIs, please think about the product groups and models first. This slide is important. Please note that several medical devices with the same manufacturing characteristics, the same design, the same purpose, 
the same risk class and the same technical files have the same basic UDI-DI. That means that the basic UDI-DI can have several UDI-DIs. However, a UDI-DI can only have one basic UDI-DI. This is quite important. Let's take a closer look on the grouping. On this slide, you can see how the basic UDI-DI is linked to several products. In this example, one syringe is identified with the UDI-DI number one. This syringe is the unit of use. In the multiple pack, two of those syringes have the example, the UDI-DI-5. Five of these multipacks in one box have the UDI-DI-6. The syringe can be also contained in a kit. The kit has the UDI-DI-7. 30 boxes with 10 syringes are on a pallet. This pallet is sold as a sales item. It carries the UDI-DI-8. All these items, UDI-1, DI 1, 5, 6, 7, 8 contains the syringe with the UDI DI 1. All these items contain the same specification or have the same certification and also the same technical files. There are two helpful guidelines. The one from MedTech Europe and the guidance of the MDC group. Both you can download with this link. In the guidance of MedTech Europe, you will find the following decision tree. This decision tree should help you with grouping your devices. The grouping is one of the most important steps when implementing UDI. On this slide, I listed where the basic UDI DI is used. How the basic UDI-DI is structured, you can see on this slide. The basic UDI-DI is in maximum 25 digit long and has two check characters, alphanumeric. In this example, I created a basic UDI-DI out of a number range of GS1. See on the top right. The basic UDI-DI has four parts, the GS1 prefix, the participant number, and the check characters are defined, are predefined, sorry. However, you can individually design the model reference. The third part of the identification key alphanumerically. The easiest way to create your basic UDI-DI is to use the generator provided by GS1.org. Please use the link. Important note, the basic UDI DI is never accorded into a symbol or printed on the package. Never. Let's move on to the grouping of your products. The main question at this point is to create a grouping of your devices and products. A little help are maybe the following questions. Do the device have the same characteristics, same design? same use or same application, same risk class, same SRN manufacturing SRN in the OIDAMATE. That will be in the future. This was a short tutorial about the basic UDI-DI. I hope you enjoyed it. There are more tutorials about UDI. Check out on our homepage. Stay tuned and thank you very much.